Good morning, Philippines. A lot of people are under the illusion that it's the American dream that everybody wants. And if you think that's the case in Asia, you'd be dead wrong. They don't want to be like the Americans. They want to be like Singapore. Every Chinese person with any wealth wants to locate in Singapore. Singapore is the richest country in Asia. They shouldn't call it Singapore, they should call it Singa Rich. The, uh, there's no term for homelessness here in, in Asia for the, for the Singaporeans. Uh, it doesn't exist. Um, and crime is extremely low because they're serious about punishments. Yes, the death penalty, capital punishment is still enforced. Another one that you might have been heard about is caning, when in a recent, or well, maybe not so recent now, American decided to do some graffiti, they caned them and sent them home. So, yeah, Singapore is the envy of uh, Asia, and a lot of economies are trying to duplicate their success. It was actually, they, they won the raffle because it was Sir Thomas Raffle that founded Singapore in the 19th century and it became a center of banking. And remarkably, that because uh, they have a problem with uh, water as a natural resource and uh, there's a, it's quite cool there because there's a constant cloud cover over the whole uh, city state. It's small, but it's stinking rich. I guess it could be compared to Monaco or Luxembourg or something like that, but not not even that. It's far wealthier than the Japanese even. So uh, after that, then I mean, you Thailand's richer and better infrastructure than the Philippines, but Singapore is where anybody in business uh, would want to locate. It's expensive there, but. Uh, you can go to work and buy property, not worrying about it being the property rights being eroded. They've got very strong property rights there, which I guess other nations are starting to look at. But yeah, don't don't think for a minute that anybody in Asia is looking at the American dream anymore. No, they want to be like Singapore, and you know you can go on about democracy, uh, republics, or whatever. But the, the bottom line is. People will only be uh, ruled or controlled by leaders who, who provide them with what they seek in life, which is peace and prosperity, not war and petulance. So, yes, uh, that's what Singapore has to offer, peace and prosperity. And that's the reason why uh, it's the Singaporean dream to come go and settle there. Um, other than that, if you're looking for something with an upside, you'd want to look at the Philippines because they have the demographics and the drive uh, to change some of the laws and they're even looking at rewriting their constitution. But they'll be looking to Singapore, who is an ally of both China and the, the UK. So they can bridge and brokerage a lot of deals when it comes to trade and commerce. So, yeah, things are not as quite as tense as people portray with the South China Sea. Um, there's a little bit of jockeying going on right now, and the Americans are, again, stomping on somebody else's playground. But I, I imagine Singapore will have a large part of it, as it did when Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un. It was Singapore he chose, they both chose as the place to meet, so. Check it out, Singapore, how wealthy they are, why they're so peaceful, uh, and the crimes there are interesting in that uh, law and order is taking, some, taking something seriously there. If you like this video or any of the others, please don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, pound that like button so that we can share what we try here to be the novel, interesting, and unique areas of of interest within the Philippines and Asia. And thank you for dropping by. We'll see you in the next one. And please feel free to leave comments in the section below. I do actually answer them.